Be the Talk, bonus episode 231, featuring Steve Gargiulo. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live again with Steve Gargiulo with his organizer hat on. Steve? Are you ready to talk? Yes. <laughs> so we are back with Steve Gargiulo. I'm going to read his bio again. Steve Gargiulo works with people from all walks of life, from all over the world, to help them make their ideas happen. His war- his book, Surge, Your Guide to Put Any Idea into Action, is an Amazon bestseller. Steve is co-founder of Action Surge and partner at Cultivate and former founder of uh, TEDx PSU, Penn State University, as well as J&J Johnson & Johnson. And that is why we're doing another bonus uh, episode here, which is going to be largely patterned after the Blitz round. Steve has taken off his speaker hat and the organizer, former and possibly future again organizer hat, is back on. How does the hat feel any different than the speaker hat? Let's start there, Steve. What, what What's the difference? How much easier possibly was it as a speaker or am I dead wrong about that? Yeah, it's totally interesting, actually, having both perspectives where I think it's it's difficult for both. So I wouldn't want to equate one as more difficult than the other. Um, certainly, as an organizer, you have a lot more things you know going on in your head and there's a lot more you know work in, in the months leading up. But when you're a speaker, the only thing you could think of is your talk. So that's, you know, totally obsessed, too. So um, I, I think the best organizers give space to their speakers to let them do you know their thing. But organizers are obviously just being pulled in a thousand different directions. Well, and they certainly are. So I'll, I'll just kind of feed everybody in because I, you know, I have a little bit of behind the scenes knowledge. I mean, imagine having a budget, imagine having sponsors, an expensive venue, catering, uh, the, the, the most prestigious, knowledgeable, forward thinking people in your community coming to your event. Uh, and, and it may, it, it may be because you've been doing multiple, multiple events and you've built that up and then you have, your team of volunteers, you're not taking a paycheck as an organizer, which is a lot of things that that people do not know. A lot of people would not imagine that to be the case at all. So imagine doing all of this. And essentially, at the end of the day, it's a volunteer job, just like anything else. Um, Steve, my question for you, I'd love for you to, um, you know, if you were to organize an event next year, or maybe you are, I mean, how would you do it different now based on just how the whole uh, juggernaut has evolved? Are there broad brush things you would do differently? Would you do a lot the same? How would you approach that now? And I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, I think a lot of time novice organizers get really obsessed with wanting to get all the logistics right, right? Mm -hmm. And to get the right venue and the right catering and all that. And obviously that stuff is important. But I think the more you go down to it, the more you can delegate, you know, that kind of stuff. And that you can actually really be focused, yes, on on the speakers, but even more so on your community and on the participants, right? And I'm very intentional about the word participants versus attendees, which is like, you want to get these people really engaged. You know, this is your community. You want to spark more action, spark more ideas in them. And so I think an obsession with that community and an obsession with beyond the day of the event, what happens next with that group? How do you spark and facilitate that to happen? So people don't get to just have the excuse of, well, I did my one day a year to be creative or my one day a year to do, no, you don't, you're not off the hook that easy. Um, this is what it means to be part of this community and it means doing X, Y, Z as well. And so I think more of a focus on the butts in the seats and what it means for those folks. Yeah. And, uh, and talk universe, just so that you understand, I mean, that's not a small nuance attendees versus participants, because this is what it looked like at the event that I, you know, participant that I spoke at. Um, and this is not uncommon at all. You know, beginning of the day, everybody's there, sponsors, uh, corporate sponsors have tables usually in the front. And then as the day progressed, guess what happens to the people in those companies that, that were sponsored, but they didn't pay out of their own pocket. Fewer and fewer of them are at the prime table seats. And that's the difference in a nutshell between a, a participant 
uh, who's really engaged, who really wants to be their real community versus just an attendee. Now, certainly we love and appreciate and need the sponsors, but there's a higher level. If you're thinking, if you're part of an organizi- organizing team right now listening to this, this is a, a level that you can probably easily upgrade, maybe not easily, but easily identify to upgrade. What are your thoughts on that? How there, Probably 90%, if not more, of organizations struggle with this issue. What could they do, even with busy people that aren't able to attend maybe the whole day? Some of these have 40-some speakers, some of the women's events and whatnot. Steve, what are some things that you've seen that have sure. worked, or what and would I, you suggest? And ideally, the word partner is different than the word sponsor, right? Which yeah. is really it's someone that you're working yeah. with. But I Good know catch. that for many people, they, they become the same thing. If you think about actually what we did at J&J in terms of bringing TEDx inside as as something that was really beneficial for the organization, if you find a company is more interested in writing a check and not interested in really being engaged, think about, well, what if we did something inside your company and worked with you to help you bring ideas to life there? Then they could start to see it in a different way. You know, I'll often challenge organizers. They feel like I can't get a sponsor. Well, could you get a company and do something of value for them inside the company that would want them to then be part of the broader community. Um, and so it's not just write a check, but it's being engaged in the ethos of ideas worth spreading. And how valuable is that as a as a partner, as someone that's making a, a financial as well as other contribution? I, what I love about that is you're up-leveling the other than financial, the other than monetary contribution to really get closer to the nature of not just a partnership, but you're actually elevating that that company's DNA by infusing some of that non-financial, the real DNA of that company and the brilliance and the creativity of, of the human uh, resource, uh, you know, the, the the resources of that company. I, I think Un- it's beautiful. Unquestionably, because, you know, if you're a TEDx organizer, your TEDx community is a brand as well that you want to cultivate and you want to be intentional about what that means. And to, so to say that another company is a partner of yours, you want to see their game get elevated. Yeah. And you want to see them be even more successful and you want them to speak well of you and, and all that good stuff. So. For sure. So now with the organizer hat on, um, and, and a lot may have changed in the last 10 years since you were, you know, more actively doing this, but in, in, uh, in general, do you advise that people memorize, improvise, or blend? Or as you've already said, Steve, do you just kind of give them that leeway? Yeah, I think every speaker is totally different. So it's hard, it's hard to be a hundred percent because everyone is different, but I always advise, obviously, the most important thing is, is having something you're really worth saying, which means it's, it's an idea, one thing that will change the way somebody thinks about something. And ideally, it's something that there will be people who disagree with it, <laughs> right? And so sometimes finding that one thing is the hardest. And often the people who most want to speak on a stage um, are the people who, are, who can be least qualified to speak on a stage. So if you're someone who's listening, who's listening because you want to give a talk, challenge yourself to like... I know it's hard, but step out of your ego for just a second and take a step back and think, what is that one really novel, interesting thing that has never been shared that people might disagree with that will actually change the way people think about something? And then how do I work to put that together in in such a way that that delivers on it? Um, But it it requires some, you know, some real soul searching because it, it is a very different type of talk. Talk Universe, I hope you heard what Steve just said, because he just put his finger on what's different about, you know, a TED Talk, a TEDx Talk. Um, there, there's a few of these branded talks, and they're different because they're short form and they're idea centric. And because they are idea centric, that means it's not about me. It's not about Steve. It's not about you being up there to be up there. It's about your idea. It's a meritocracy of ideas, and that's so unlike anything else out there. A keynote, a speaking club thing that you might do, and these are all wonderful things, but this is what's unique, and this is it's not the big block letters on the stage. <laughs> There's a magic, and it's not the big block letters. It's the idea centricity of it, and it's the short form, and it's the subjugation of our own speaker egos in the search for something a little bit more transcendent. Steve, your thoughts on that? Yeah, 100%. And that's absolutely foundational, which is what what is that thing? And then once you're in a place where you have that, then it's about the approach of, okay, what's everything I might want to include? How do I start to winnow that down? I want to have a good balance of analytical and emotional. 
um, and then, you know, figuring out the right flow to be able to deliver on the talk. But the methodology of crafting the talk, I think for each person is different depending on their, their speaking style comfort. But that, that methodology of what makes a talk, I think is, is a hundred percent the same for, for everybody and making sure to challenge yourself in that way yeah, is, is super important. So, uh, whenever I have a, 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 a a, a, a certain type of speaker, or I, I include organizers on that. I've, I've kind of categorized these after the last 200 some interviews that I've done. I have organizers on, which is wonderful. I have MCs on, I have openers on, I have closers on, and I th- actually it may be four instead of five. I would, I would love, uh, it's easy for me to, uh, talk with closers and openers, uh, a little bit more specifically. Can you describe the role of the MC? As well, because I, I like having MCs on because I think it's important for audience members as well as future talkers like Talk Universe are to understand the role of the MC, understand kind of what's going on backstage and how to be a real clutch player, whether they're sure. in a shorter or, you know, a shorter lineup. I was one of only 12, which I consider a very small one. There are others with 20, 30, 40 or more, and you've got to be more knowledgeable. You don't want to be one of the high maintenance speakers <laughs> that day. So um, I'd love for you to talk about some of those dynamics as well as organizers as MCs or if uh, yep. the organizers who aren't MCs and how to find a good MC and what they do. Yep. And, I'm, and I've done both. So I've, I've been the MC yeah. sometimes as an organizer and I've sometimes not been the MC. I think when you're looking for an MC, the most important thing, you know, for this kind of event is just keeping the keeping the day moving, right? It's not about the MC, you know, being so much that they're while they in many ways are the face of shaping the event, the best ones do so in such a way where it's not about them. It's very much about the speaker and the next speaker. Like people who know the talk and who know the talk that's about to come up and can genuinely get people excited for it do way better than someone who's just like, Hey, ah, I want to get you moving and clapping and blah, blah, blah. Like that's, that's very superficial. So that's why I actually like doing it myself more because I know what I want people to get out of the talk. And I know the energy and the state that I want them in to really receive this next speaker. Yeah, so the and- best MCs can, can do that. And they help create that right environment for the speaker to succeed as, as best as she can. And and really, organizers, I mean, they are joined at the hip with you, Talk Universe. From the first time that you submit your video or your application, they're, they're kind of nurturing and cultivating. It's almost like a gardening process. Uh, and and they, they know you pretty well. So I, I agree. I mean, uh, an organizer as MC, it's additional uh it's definitely additional pressure and work but they certainly know you inside and out and when that can happen they can really make a unique knowledgeable contribution now I, i'd love for you to speak to kind of the role of the mc another role is to not just keep the day moving not just to kind of keep an eye on the time and and try to you know, navigate and adjust and be the face of the event. But a- another issue, which is a lot less tangible, is, you know, just gluing the the different pieces together. You may have a very shocking talk. You may have a super controversial talk or, a, you know, all ideas were spreading. You may have a talk that's, you know, about bereavement or death. And then you might have a next one coming down the pike, which is just on, you know, laughter yoga or something like that. And the MC gets to be the person to try to transition from these, these opposing forces. How has that worked for you, Steve? Yeah, really great question. Because as a speaker, you might be thinking like, hey, you know what? I'm better in the morning or I'm better in the afternoon or I have to leave early. Can you do this? I will tell you. I love that one. I have to, I, I have to leave early. So the, the rest of the 42 right. of you, I have to I, leave early. <laughs> I will tell you the, from an organizer's perspective, the agony that goes into the, the mm-hmm. curation process of the sequence of the speakers and going from this subject to this subject is extremely intentional and extremely thoughtful. And typically each session, like each group of four or five speakers or whatever it is, has been crafted in such a way that if, if one speaker backs out of this, I, d- I have to disrupt the entire day to now think about a new sequence. So that, that, that is very, very intentional, why people have been put in the order that they've put in. And then the role of the MC in helping to tell that story is helping share just enough so that the, the participants understand why and understand that story and get that 
we're moving, we're moving through this day in such a way that like, yes, we're starting big picture and then we're diving into this. And yes, you just got gut punched here. And now I want to lift you up. Like you're creating this emotional roller coaster in a, in a very intentional way. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's agony. Like I would make, I would write people's names on magnets and then, you know, you go kind of back and forth on a whiteboard and think what makes the most sense. It's, it's not easy. Yeah, powerful. So what what about a situation and you've done it both ways. So you've had times when you were the MC and then you found other MCs. There may be a whole lot of legitimate reasons why you need to find an MC. What would be some key uh, criteria or way to go about finding a good MC that isn't just going to be a really gifted anchor person from the local news, for example, but to really do the kind of uh, integration that you've already described with partners and things like that. You, you, totally. you really know how to bring that together. What would your criteria be, Steve? Yeah, I think number one would be finding a thoughtful, dedicated person who will be totally dedicated to the whole process the way you are as an organizer. So that's why it doesn't matter if you can get the celebrity person or the local whatever who's going to show up the same day and leave. I don't that that in my experience hasn't set the right kind of tone versus a person who's going to sit through rehearsals and get to know the speakers and all that because you want someone who who knows and can convey all that intention. And then the ideal bonus would be since you as an organizer are so caught up, you know, uh, on breaks and all kinds of other things, you're so caught up on other things. Somebody who can be outside being a connector and helping to facilitate the conversations between people and, you know, just walks by somebody. Hey, Brad, have you met Susan? Like and just and like th these kinds of things who can help set that kind of tone throughout the experience. I think that's an extra bonus. Um, and uh, and yeah, so those are the kinds of things I would look for. Powerful stuff. We've been talking to Steve Gargiulio and um, we have been enjoying this talk um, with Steve Gargiulio. Uh, he gave a recent talk at TEDx Carthage, but we've got his organizer hat on right now. And uh, this is a bonus episode with him. I want to let you know where you can go to check out his talk, The Science of Taking Action. That's in another episode that we talked about that. You can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. More importantly, you can go and connect with what Steve is doing right now at Steve Gargiulo. Dot com. Uh, his last name is spelled G-A-R-G-U-I-L-O, Steve Gargiulo dot com. And uh, Steve, love to give you the final word of advice for Talk Universe. Sure. So I think, you know, being an organizer is hard. Being a, a speaker is hard. Uh, if you're someone who's, you know, like I said, out there right now thinking, I want to give a talk and I, and I want to work on this, think less about how do I pitch this organizer to get them excited about me and, and my great talk and whatever, and try to think if from the perspective of what is this organizer trying to accomplish? This organizer is trying to accomplish amplifying really unique ideas in, in our local community. And so how can you come to them in such a way where you're saying, I have, or I know of a really unique, interesting idea in this community that I want to share. Maybe before you even pitch yourself, Maybe you find 10 other people in your community who you think would be really great on your stage. And over the course of a couple of years after amplifying them, the person's going to be like, hey, what about you? Like, you seem like you have something great. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, try to try to put that hat on. And I think, yeah, you know, it'll work out well for everybody. All right. Talk Universe. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the ideas. And Steve Gargiulo, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.